So, hello and welcome to a little update on my shunting layout. And I've done quite a bit of detail work this week. I've wanted to um, bring it to life a little bit, if you like. So let's just look quickly talk through what we've done. I'm just gonna move our locomotive out of the way. We'll come back to him in a little while. So I've done quite a bit of work on the station. The most obvious being, the platform canopy. Now this is my usual corrugated cardboard uh, and skewers, but I have sort of done some nice detail around the bottom. Um, I thought they need a little bit of facilities there. And I've started adding some people. So we've got an older couple there having a natter about where the train's gonna come in. And the station master's done his best to brighten up what is quite a bland scene. He's got some flower boxes there. Um, and I've done the bay quite nicely. So I've now got the corrugated fence all the way around and down to the end and a buffer stop there a couple of advertising posters a um, couple of people so we've got a lady going up to london for the day and the porter is uh helping her with her bags and we've got a guy there at the good shed added a couple of posters again and on the wall and some boxes so the station scene in general i'm very happy with oh and the lamp of course so that's brought that to life to life quite nicely and then we've got Maples Agricultural Warehouse, one of the reasons the line is here. And that's looking very busy. And the reason it's looking very busy is George Maple, the grandson of the owner Archie, um, is at work today and he's busy watching everyone, working hard, getting ready to load onto the wagons. I found a crane in my spares box, so we added that, bit of, bit of a paint job. Now this, that's the lid of a Humbrol paint can, uh, just painted up and weathered to look like the base so again quite happy with that so that scene now is probably one of the nicest little cameos i've done on a layout what with the station and the warehouse the coal yard i've added another coal stave put some coal on the ground and i picked this up on ebay look at that a british coal mini fantastic i wanted a little coal lorry to go in there and how that was just wonderful put some sacks in the corner and a bit more of that wonderful corrugated fencing there so the station area I'm really happy with and we've also got here the beginnings of the fuel tank. Now this is uh, an any scale models uh, tank that's been painted up, put on a piece of cardboard um, and the shed is just another one of these little Hornby ones that come with their train set. So I've just caught that, there we go. And painted up they look really good. And the other any scale models bits here are these walking boards, track crossing boards, really good as was a lot of this luggage. So it's, it's really, and the buildings of course. So there's a lot of any scale models in this. I do still have quite a bit of work to do on the factory and so on. Um, but by and large, I couldn't really be much happier with it. Um, I just like the difference, you know, we, we do little country stations all the time, but this is a busy town station. The back scene is just great. You know, the way it works there, you can just see over the fence, down the roads, down the streets. The corrugated fencing has just blended it. Um, and I like the idea that it, that's probably why the line, I thought a, few, a bit through the history. So it wasn't built on a grand scale, so it would have been quite profitable. Passenger traffic would have built because the town would have got busier because you can go to here and from here. The various private lines would have kept it open. And I could see this surviving well into um, the blue diesel era. Um, albeit probably with uh, rail buses and things because the factories would still be going and I think today this would be a line that would still be in use heavily rationalised, little rail car coming down but it's easy then to think of this as a line that I can play trains with all the way from sort of steam, pre-grouping right the way through nationalisation all the way up to blue, blue diesels and I've got a couple of cunning plans for that so I'm really pleased that it's a line that, not that it matters but that I've got the idea of a history that means it would have been, could have been a real line and it would have had a future and a life. Certainly would have survived beaching, I think, because of the, the goods traffic. Um, so I'm, I suppose I'm a bit inordinately pleased with what is a tiny little layout. It's 10 inches by a metre, um, but I'm gonna have some fun with it. So what I'm gonna do in a minute is I'm just gonna run some trains up and down, because um, I know people like to see that. I will just pull this one back. So this I was very pleased with. This is uh, one of the Airfix Suburban Brakes. Um, it did cost me about £15, but at current prices, that's, that's not too bad. Uh, it's immaculate. I actually looked at the new Hornby ones, which were 30. 
And as far as I can see, this is the same tooling. So I'm more than happy that it's about half the price. Um, yeah, so I'm pleased with that. So as I say, that's the progress we've done so far. I haven't forgotten the loft. I have done a little bit in the loft, but not enough to make a video on. Um, and obviously I've been concentrating on this a bit. So I'll just do a, a little bit of shunting and film. So here we go, I'm just gonna try a little bit of shunting. Um, it's a little, I'm a little cramped here for space and I'm also trying to reach a controller uh, and do uncoupling and things. So it might be a bit disjointed, but let's see what we can do. So we've got a nice little 040 tank loco there, bringing in our suburban brake. So um, we're just gonna uncouple that. There we go. Oh no, we're not, because once he's finished, you see I said I needed to practice. He's just going to shunt this back into the loop. There we go. Now we're going to uncouple it. So my uncoupling hook is uh, a bent paper clip stapled to a meat skewer, uh, painted white so I can see it. Um, and we'll run that forward to there. Change our points. And run round. Now, I'm quite happy changing points manually. I think it's worth pointing out that, um, you know, track needs a little bit of a clean. I'm an old war gamer, so war gamers have always had to use the hand of God. You know, your figures don't move over the battlefield on their own and the tanks don't move on their own. So I've got none of this aversion to having a hand on a layout that a lot of people seem to be absolutely against. You know, why aren't I using automatic uncouplings and this, that and the other, apart from the cost and expense that's involved. Um, I'm quite happy to do it with my hands, uh, move my points and uncouple locos. So there we go. Now this is now refusing. Oh, I know why. I'm going to have to watch this. So where I've stopped it is actually on the frog of the point, which I'm going to have to learn not to do. The thing is here, I'm using Hornby points instead of my preferred Pico ones. The reason being that I want to save my Pico ones for my loft layout, um, which does mean that um, I, I didn't have enough Pico to do it. So I've used some Hornby ones, and obviously with the larger plastic frogs, um, they're not as good. So let's just run. Now I do have some locos that don't stall on the, on the uh, points. I just happened to pick this one up. So this is another break coach but this is the great western one this one actually only cost me 10 pound that's rather nice it's a little juddery at the moment because I say track needs a clean but i just thought it'd be nice to run some trains for people i would be normally do it a bit slower but as i know the track needs cleaning i'm just being fair to it but you can see that the runaround loop works very well no issues there. That's a great looking little loco as well. And away we go. So here we go then, let's um, run something in just to pick up the goods. I thought we'd have something a little bit different look. And that's my uh, Oxford Rail Janus 060. Um, lovely little runner. I like that one. I know it's private livery, but it does look just like BR Blue, really, doesn't it? So they are about still at the moment for around the £50 mark. Um, and I would say that they are. Uh, well worth that if you see one. That's what I paid for mine direct at Hornby a couple of years ago. They are a very, very good little loco. I'm going to have to go. I was being lazy and trying to reach and I can't. So there we go. So it's dropped the brake van off there. And he's just going to get the other wagons now and put them on the back of the brake van. Change a couple of points. So the signalman's very busy today. And past the coal yard, pick up our coal wagon. Coupled up all right, yep. Just out of shot there. 
I'm using a tripod here so that I don't have to, so I've got some spare hands, so hopefully it's an okay angle. Just that there. And now we're going to get the parcels van out of the bay. Sorry, it's a little bit off shot, but um, so I wanted to just try and use a tripod to get a steady shot on it. Got our parcels wagon. Oh, no, it hasn't quite coupled. It's on a bend, so of course it's a little bit temperamental there. There we go. Hopefully got it. Oh, it's not like that, it's still in a point. Does need a little bit of a clean there to be fair. There we go. Pick up goods. Um, again, I'm gonna have to watch that because it's on the plastic frog, so that's gonna be fun to watch that one. And off we go. But plenty of operating potential and just a few little glitches to sort out um, which we will so thank you always as always for watching and um, we'll have an update for you next week uh, stay safe speak to you all again soon hi thanks for watching the video and for the nice comments uh, click on the left for a previous video in this series, click on the right for another video you might enjoy and please don't forget to click to subscribe, like, comment etc. Thanks again.